Hi, my name is Melissa. Does anybody know what STEM stands for? S-T-E-M. It stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Usually when you go to a job, it's almost 50-50 men and women, or at least uh, employers try to make that. Um, according to a um, ESA study in 2009, it's about 24% women in the STEM field. I have a friend who is a current student at Texas Tech. Her name is Anna Sanchez. And I want to just ask her five questions, just kind of first-hand experience in this year, what it's like to be a woman in the STEM uh, field. She's a, a civil engineer, so she's way down here. This is a 2008 study um, by the U.S. Department of Labor, um, so she's a minority. Um, just a quick overview of those questions. The first question I asked is, what's the percentage of women in your classes? She said less than 30%. That hasn't changed much since 2009, according to what she said. So we need to get those up. We need to get these women in, in the field. Second question, do you ever feel discriminated in your classes, your groups, your projects? And she said, yes, the men automatically try to take the reins. They try to take the big, you know, the big boy position and kind of put the women in the administrative or little paperwork. Um, so it's definitely a stigma that we want to get rid of. Uh, the third question I ask is, um, how would you feel if you knew about a workshop that we'll explain later in more detail that we're going to offer? She said she would love it. Um, young ladies need to know that they're smart, they can do it, and to not be afraid. The fourth question I ask is, do you have any advice for women pursuing a career in the STEM field? Don't be afraid to be nerdy. Keep going and don't give up. The final question I asked was, um, what made you decide to become a civil engineer? And it was a school counselor that talked to her, really encouraged her to research um, being a civil engineer, and that really made her, that made her go for it. That's what she's going for. And it took one person in her life to make her do something she kind of always wanted to do, it was kind of scared to me. And that's what we're trying to do with our event that we're going to offer. We want these kids to get their feet wet, we want them to meet other kids, we really want to kind of kick them in the butt to kind of go for it. Our purpose is to promote more women in the STEM field. Obviously 24% needs to get up. DFW, especially now, has more job opportunities than ever. It seems like everybody's coming down here to over the corporate business. We want to create a program to motivate, motivate and educate young women to pursue a career in the STEM field. The STEM field. I handed out a flyer earlier. Um, it's about our event. It's a one-day event. It's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're going to have uh, one main speaker. We're going to have representatives from, from universities. And we're going to have opportunities for summer camps that these girls can go to. The location is um, Clyde Warren Park. We chose this location. This is kind of the heart of Dallas right now. We have Toyota, we have Pandora, AT&T. Verizon wants to order, um, bring some branches over here. Um, it's the heart of where it's going to be, so we found this location to be a great choice. Um, I'm going to pass it to Monica. She's going to go more into detail about the event. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm Monica. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about who we are. Um, we are TI, and we're from the High Tech High Heels program. Um, our event's gonna be called Women in Power, and we wanna provide STEM career information and kind of get rid of the stereotypes that come along with being a woman, that's a woman that's interested in science and math at a young age. And we wanna increase the confidence in girls, women um, entering these courses in universities, and women entering the workforce as well. <coughs> So our activities for the day, we'll start at 9 a.m. and we'll begin with a main convention gathering. It'll include a main speaker, somebody prevalent in the uh, tech industry, and somebody who's kind of dealt with the adversity of being a woman in the STEM field. And then we'll go ahead and break out sessions into different age groups, which include young girls, college women, and men and women in the workforce already. And then towards the end, after these breakout sessions, we'll regroup into university recruitment booths and kind of get um, young girls and even women into your colleges into schools that fit these needs or people who are maybe interested in masters in the STEM field or um, the world of workforce. And this is kind of how we want to have, this is the actual picture of Clyde Warren Park from a previous event. 
And that's how we want to set up our main stage where our main speaker will be speaking. And then we'll have more booths um, than that around the side for university recruitment and the different breakout sessions. And so to go a little more in depth about these in each age group, we're young girls. We really want to defeat the stigma, starting in like girls with elementary and middle school, and just kind of tell them that liking science or math or being an engineer isn't just for the boys, that you're just as able to do it as they are. And we kind of want to educate the girls about the classes that will prepare them for university, like AP math and science courses or intro engineering courses that are offered in certain high schools. And then we also want to give them the opportunity to enroll into summer and IT camps and get to know the children and girls in their area that are also interested in the things that they are. And then for college women, we want to focus mainly on internships, job fairs, and resume building workshops. With the internships, we're focusing on women that are in two-year colleges as well as women in universities um, that are kind of looking for that, that experience in the STEM field before they go ahead and enter the workforce. Um, and then with job fairs, we want to focus on women who are seniors in universities and who are going to graduate and ready to get their feet wet into their careers. And then for the resume building workshops, sometimes STEM resumes or science or math, they get a little more detailed and certain, sometimes they tend to have a different looking resume than we do because there's more certifications in the technology field. So we want to kind of focus on their type of resumes. And we didn't want to completely exclude men from this. Um, we know that sometimes in the workforce, like she had, like Ms. Melissa had mentioned before, that sometimes it's not as diverse as, we, as we'd like it to be. So we want to kind of give workshops on how to diversify your workforce and how to, especially in the technology field, kind of like welcome these women that are going to be coming into your workforce and make sure that it's not completely male dominated or that you're not pertaining directly to males and kind of create a welcoming environment to them. And I'm going to pass it on to Yukon to speak about our budget and staffing. Hi, I'm Yukon. Uh, so I guess the main question to ask is, what does this do for the Texas, uh, Texas Chamber of Commerce? So the, first of all, I think this will be a great opportunity for to create job growth in the DFW area. Uh, our, we will be giving an opportunity for both the men and women who come to our camp uh, to to have a jump start in their career in the STEM field. Uh, secondly, um, this will be a great opportunity for us to diversify the workforce. So a lot of girls nowadays are facing uh, gender discrimination in the workforce. So what we will be teaching is both encouraging them to pursue a career in the STEM field and um, teaching them how to handle those discrimination both in school and in the workforce. Uh, and lastly, it will help uh, improve the science education of our girls. So since we'll be giving out um, some science and math camps, it will help help raise their math and science skills with the science camp we're providing. So as for staff and budget, currently we have a staff of 54 people. This will include one main distinguished speaker who have years of experience <coughs> working at TI and she'll uh, be at the managerial level. Uh, then we'll have 10 women engineers who are currently working in STEM field, and they'll be in charge of the small booths, um, giving out basically giving out advice for the girls. Uh, 30 volunteers, and they're, they're going to be setting up for the tables, get, handing out the food, and make sure making sure that everything goes smoothly. Uh, there will also be 10 career counselors, and then they're going to be coming from both high school and universities, and then they're going to be in charge of the resident workshops as well as giving out career information. Uh, and finally, we're going to have three event coordinators. They'll be from our own program, uh, High, High Tech and Kill, and they'll be making sure that everything runs smoothly and uh, successfully. So for current budget that we needed, uh, we have calculated to be $37. Uh, we're asking for half the, uh, half the money uh, from Dallas Regional Ch Chamber of Commerce. Um, as you can see, this will include uh, equipment, staffing, food, and beverages, technical support, facilities, as well as the advertisement. So our biggest expense is um, equipment and facilities. This will include uh, basically stages, insurance from the climate Warren park, um, setting up tables, and transportations. We're also, in our staffing, we also include training, uh, background check, as well as uh, reimbursement. 
Now I'll pass to Michael, we'll talk about success measures. <coughs> Hello, um, I'm Michael. Um, we didn't want this project to not be successful. We didn't want this to not make an impact on others' lives. So we wanted to see how we're gonna measure the success of the project. So by first, we're gonna be collecting the participation rates among young girls in AP classes. Um, we're gonna be seeing how many more girls <coughs> enrolled in the upcoming year than the years before. Um, AB classes are extremely important because they're the stepping stones for engineering and science classes for higher education. Um, secondly, we'll be analyzing the classroom applications into engineering classes and science classes within community colleges, universities, and surrounding areas. Um, these are important as well as they are the prerequisites for STEM fields. Like Monica has said before, um, these classes will not only give you a background knowledge onto what you're going to be entering into, but they can help with resume building, interview skills, and other job skills that are going to be very important in STEM companies. So not only are we looking at education, we're going to be surveying surrounding companies in Dallas area to see if they have an increase in their women in the STEM fields. Diversification is extremely important in the workforce um, because this can help contribute to the success and make better results for each company with more bright minds across the board. So with this graph up here, you can see in the higher percentages, um, 80 and 90 percent, that um, a lot of the women are entering into the public administration, education, and health professions. The bulk of that is what most women in society today are entering into. However, if you look in 30s, 20s, and 10 percent, women are not likely to enter into engineering <coughs> classes, science classes, computer science, or math classes. These are very small numbers, and that's exactly what we want to change. We want to change the amount that women are entering into these male-dominated so the takeaway, there are a multiple programs and a plethora of organizations out there to raise the confidence in women pursuing a career in the STEM field. However, what really sets us apart is that we're not an organization that just targets education. We bring in companies to show what women, uh, what kind of market they're going to be entering into. Um, with this project, we hope to accomplish a larger breakthrough through the barriers of um, entering more women into the STEM field. Um, so a lot of people kind of ask, how is this going to benefit DFW? Well, diversification fosters innovation in companies. Um, DFW area is such a fast-paced, upcoming city that we want to show the rest of the nation what kind of city we are. We are a city of equal opportunity. Um, we want to break down definitely the barriers that a lot of people and the stigma that girls have entering into the STEM field and give everyone the equal chance that they deserve. So why would you want to limit brilliant minds in making a difference in the world? So for a lot of, um, for those who don't really know how important and powerful women are, um, here are some companies that I didn't know personally were CEOs of. Um, Yahoo, Campbell, HP, and PepsiCo all had their women as CEO chairs. And one of these days, a young, aspiring woman can make a difference. Um, any questions, comments, concerns? is there's obviously a need everywhere, but since we're going to be um, partnering with the Dallas Chamber of Commerce, we're going to be definitely wanting to show them that there is a big need within companies and surrounding schools. And um, obviously you have a personal interview, um, so it kind of gives a prime example of how low the percentages of women are going to be entering the system. So it's obviously a need everywhere. Okay, thank you. How much are you asking from the Chamber of Commerce? 15000 Our total budget is going to be 30000 but we are providing 15000 on our own and asking for 15000 Okay, thank you so much. Thank you.